Have you ever wondered what happened to the Nazis after World War II? Well the story is more complicated than you might think. The world had just witnessed the end of a devastating conflict, and the Allies stood victorious. Germany, the cradle of Nazism, was divided into occupation zones, each managed by the United States, the United Kingdom, France and the Soviet Union. Each of these zones had its own unique approach to denazification, the process of eradicating Nazi influence from German and Austrian society. Despite detaining around 400,000 Germans, the sheer number of people involved in the Nazi party made it an uphill battle to hold everyone accountable. Yet, as the world began to rebuild, the urgency to restore Germany's economy and infrastructure presented its own set of challenges. Compromises were made, allowing many former Nazis to return to professional life. The denazification process, though essential, was fraught with complications and compromises. While the Allies were dealing with denazification, many high-ranking Nazis were making their escape. As the dust of World War II settled, a clandestine exodus was underway. South America, particularly Argentina, became the escape route of choice for many Nazis. Why Argentina you ask? Well, under the presidency of Juan Perón, Argentina was more than just accommodating. Perón's government was strikingly sympathetic to the Nazi cause, going as far as to facilitate the escape and entry of these fugitives. It's estimated that up to 9,000 Nazi officials and collaborators found sanctuary in the welcoming arms of South America. From high-ranking officers to notorious war criminals, Argentina was a veritable refuge. But it wasn't just Argentina. Other South American countries, under regimes that were sympathetic to the Nazi cause, also played host to these escapees. The aftermath of World War II was a chaotic time. And amidst this chaos, South America became a safe haven for those seeking to evade justice. However, not all Nazis were running away, some were actively recruited, that's right. In the aftermath of World War II, both the United States and the Soviet Union saw the potential in the minds that had once powered the Nazi war machine. In a bid to outdo each other in the looming Cold War, they launched initiatives to recruit German scientists and engineers. Among these, Operation Paperclip stands out. This US-led initiative saw more than 1,600 German scientists, engineers and technicians, many of whom were former Nazis, being brought to the United States to work on America's behalf. Some of these recruits even went on to play significant roles in the NASA space program. This decision, however, was not without controversy. While the aim was to gain a strategic advantage, it also meant providing a safe haven to individuals who had been part of a regime responsible for heinous war crimes. Operation Paperclip remains one of the most controversial aspects of the post-war period. For those who didn't escape or weren't recruited, justice awaited at the Nuremberg trials. In the aftermath of World War II, the world grappled with the extent of Nazi atrocities. The Nuremberg trials, held in the German city of Nuremberg, were an attempt to bring the most notorious Nazis to justice. These trials saw 22 prominent figures of the Third Reich charged with war crimes, crimes against humanity, and aggression. The proceedings were an unprecedented endeavor, with an international military tribunal representing the Allies presiding over the courtroom. However, the Nuremberg trials were not without their critics. Some argued that they represented victor's justice, a process biased towards those who emerged victorious from the war. Others felt that the trials didn't capture the full extent of Nazi crimes, particularly those of a systemic nature. Despite these criticisms, the Nuremberg trials were instrumental in establishing a legal precedent for prosecuting war crimes and crimes against humanity. The Nuremberg trials were a step towards justice but many felt they didn't go far enough. Despite all these efforts, the specter of Nazism lingered in Germany. Efforts to cleanse the nation of its dark past were not as successful as hoped. In the wake of the war, many former Nazis managed to return to their professional lives, their identities masked by the chaos of post-war reconstruction. Some even ascended to influential positions within society, their past affiliations conveniently forgotten or deliberately overlooked. The extent of this influence became startlingly clear when, at one point, 77% of senior officials in the German Ministry of Justice were found to be former Nazis. These individuals, once part of a regime that had brought unimaginable horror to the world, were now entrusted with upholding justice and the rule of law in a nation striving to move beyond its past. The insidious persistence of Nazi influence in post-war Germany is a chilling reminder of how difficult it is to eradicate ideologies once they take root. The shadow of the Nazi past was not easily dispelled. 
Yet there were those who dedicated their lives to hunting down Nazis who had escaped justice. In the aftermath of World War II, a tenacious group of individuals and organizations rose to the occasion, transforming themselves into Nazi hunters. Their mission, to track down Nazi war criminals who had evaded the grasp of international law and bring them to justice. Among the most notorious captures were Adolf Eichmann, the architect of the Holocaust, and Franz Stangl, the commandant of Treblinka and Sobobor death camps. Their trials held in public view served as potent reminders of the atrocities committed under Nazi rule. However, as the years rolled by, the fervor of these Nazi hunters began to wane, largely due to the natural aging and death of the targets. The reality is, the passage of time as relentless as it is, has turned the pursuit of justice into a race against time itself. As time passes, the pursuit of justice becomes a race against time. The story of what happened to the Nazis after World War II is complex and often unsatisfactory. The efforts to eradicate Nazi influence, the escapes to South America, the controversial Operation Paperclip, the Nuremberg trials, the continued Nazi influence, and the relentless pursuit by Nazi hunters, all highlight the intricate tapestry of this dark historical period. The denazification process was laden with challenges, with the sheer number of individuals involved in the Nazi party making it difficult to effectively bring them all to justice. The escape of high-ranking Nazis to South America, facilitated by sympathetic regimes, further complicated matters. Even the Nuremberg trials, while being a significant step towards justice, were criticized for not capturing the full extent of Nazi crimes. And despite all these efforts, former Nazis managed to retain influential positions within post-war Germany. This is a chapter of history that continues to provoke debate and research, reminding us of the importance of remembering and understanding our past.